Let's talk about raids in War of the Visions. This is one of the most important pieces of content in the game because the gear that can be farmed in raids is often very strong. So why do we even do raids? Well, each raid has a raid shop with featured recipes of new gear as well as two other recipes from previous raid equipment. In this case, we have the Full Metal Alchemist gear plus three previous items that could be crafted and farmed for. The priority in the raid shops is usually to buy 64 recipes of the equipment that you want to fully forge. This is because it will take 64 recipes to make the plus 6 version of an item. Now some items do not have a plus 6 version yet, but once they get one, you'll want that extra recipe. In the case of the Full Metal Alchemist item, there's only a plus 5 version, so you could just grab 63 recipes instead. By saving up enough currency to buy 64 recipes, you will usually farm the required amount of materials needed to craft that item. Sometimes raids will give extra copies of recipes or even crafted gear through milestones and this will reduce the amount of recipes that you need to buy and will allow you to go after recipes of other pieces of gear. The cap on recipes in the raid shop is 100. This means you cannot craft multiple plus fives of a raid gear in one raid. However, the next raid often has the featured gear from the previous raid, meaning that if you buy 100 recipes now, you can craft a second piece later if you need. However, this does not apply to limited raids, so for example, the Full Metal Alchemist raid, you will not need any leftover recipes. So how do you activate a raid? Every time you spend 20 stamina or more in the game, it will activate a raid and you will get a little notification. You can store up to 10 activated raids to complete all at once, however, you won't get any more raid activations once you have 10 stored, so make sure you do those 10 before spending more stamina. Make sure you head into the settings and hit options and scroll down until you see the raid encounter animation button. Make sure this is switched off or you'll have to watch the encounter animation every single time you proc a raid. If you'd like to farm raids while doing auto battles, you can go into the battle settings and then to repeat settings and scroll down to where you see stop repeat and turn on the raid encounters. I like to set it to 10 encounters so that once we hit that 10 maximum saved, it will stop the farming and I'll be able to do my 10 raids. Some people have very specific ways that they like to activate raids. I personally like to use story skip tickets to farm raids because I have over 6,000 of them. I skip story missions four at a time to activate a raid every time. I do this 10 times total and then I complete 10 raids and then I come back and do it another 10 times. If I am auto farming for a day, then I might use that stop raid function, but most of the time I'm just powering through and farming as much as I can when I have free time. Aside from the main raid boss, there is also a rare secondary one. Every time you activate a raid, it has the chance of being the rare boss. The rare boss typically has a different element and weakness from the main boss and also gives increased rewards for each clear. Many raids also have a special bonus vision card that is acquired once you have cleared level 5 of the rare raid boss. There is also a pity system for activating the rare boss. If you don't get a rare boss in 20 tries, it will give you one, but if you get one before that randomly, it will reset the pity. When creating a team for the raid, you want to attempt to target the raid boss's weak element and resistance. And if you're a new player, you might just want to target the resistance they are weak to as it can be difficult to form a mono element party. There are many bonus units available to pick from to get more rewards. Having multiple bonus units does not stack and the bonus percentage will just stay the same as the highest unit you have. So build around the highest bonus unit that you have. Although sometimes, especially for new players, you might want to build around a lower bonus unit if you can make a more cohesive team around them. Vision cards just give bonuses for having them in your inventory. You don't even have to put them into your formation. If you have them, you get the bonus. Raids can be completed in a solo mode with four units, in a duo mode with two units per player, and a four player mode where you each bring one unit. Each of these modes scales up the amount of rewards that you get. So in solo play, you get the least amount of rewards. In the duo play, you get the second most, and then in the four player mode, you get the most rewards. Since the four player rooms give the most medals, if you happen to be able to solo a raid with a single unit, that can be an effective way to farm it quickly. Similarly, if you can farm it with two units in a duo party, there's no need to find another player and you can farm the raid faster than if you were using a solo four unit clear. 
There are also multiplayer rooms that used to be a lot more common in raids, but now because so many people can clear them by themselves, it's harder to find rooms. My suggestion is, is that if you're new uh, to find other new players on a Discord to play with, or maybe to ask your guild for help. If you are making a raid multiplayer room for other players, make sure that you set it to max speed and also set the ability effects to off. Let's talk about building a team for a raid. In the case of Envy, this is a ice type boss that's weak to fire attacks, and we can see that the biggest weakness here is magic type damage at negative 15%. Slash is also not too bad at 10%. The idea here is that you want to build a team that is going to target these weaknesses. So for example, if you could make a fire team that does magic damage, that would be very effective against Envy. Or if you could build a fire team that did slash damage, you could capitalize on the fact that you would be getting a slash chain as well as a fire chain. Whereas with magic attacks, you can't actually magic chain, you can only get the elemental chain. Because of this, slash teams are often one of the best raid teams regardless of the resistances because slash units are so common and they often have some chaining skills that you can use slash units from multiple elements, especially if you're new, to put them all together into one team. When looking at a raid boss, you should also look at their resistances. If there's a chance that you can inflict an effect like slow on them, that can allow you to get a higher chain and complete a boss more quickly, or even just complete a boss if you're not able to beat them. We can also look at the King Bradley rare boss and see that he is a earth element, weak to wind and weak to strike. So Edward Elric is going to be a very effective unit against him. Typically for the rare bosses, I can clear them with the exact same team that I'm using on the main boss, but for new players, you might have to set up a very specific strike team uh, if you want to take him out at higher levels. So how do you put together a team? Well, let's take a look at this team that I have here. Now, I want to mention that this team is not fully optimized in my eyes yet. It is just something I'm throwing together while I raise my raid level all the way to 100. However, there are some elements that we can talk about that are really good uh, strategies to use for any sort of raid team that you want to put together. So the first thing is the vision cards. We want to make sure that we are maximizing the use of all of our vision cards. In PvE modes like this where you're doing high chaining, it's really important to have a max damage limit up so that you're able to deal higher than the damage cap that is available to your units. It's also important that in the EX upgrade screen that you upgrade the damage limit for all of your EX units. We also want to make sure that we have things like agility up, things like magic or attack percent up, things like magic attack up or fire attack up, anything that will raise our damage against these different bosses. In the case of my classy glassy here, she doesn't need the mace with the magic resist penetration because this boss has negative magic resistance. So instead I have the spirit penetration mace as the boss does have a little bit of spirit. In the case of my other units here, you can see they all have some TMR on them that will give them some value except for Roy and for, um, for Yuffie. At this time, I haven't put a specific ability that they, that they need, but what I would look at doing in the future is maybe giving them a TMR that gives them haste so again they can go as much as possible uh, and deal as much damage as possible and chain with each other. For raid bosses, you can also look at your espers to see if they have any killer nodes. In the case of Envy, he is actually a beast type, so if you have beast killer on any sort of equipment, you can deal more damage against Envy. With King Bradley, he is a human type, so any espers with human killer or any items at all with human killer will help you kill this boss. We actually have a beast killer equipment that we can use in this fight. So if you can farm the beast bane pendant, that will help you do even more damage. If you're not having any trouble killing the boss in the first place, this isn't necessary, but it is a cool thing for people that need that extra boost to take out the level 100 raid. We can also look at skill on and offs for all of our units. When I click on Roy Mustang and I long press on one of his jobs, it's going to bring up all of his skills. And here I can actually go in and I can adjust which ones are on and off. Now we're playing this in multi mode, so if I don't want this skill to activate, I would have to turn it off. So for example, if we look at Incinerator, this is a skill that I will actually turn off because it doesn't have any chaining abilities. However, this skill here is a three hit skill, so I want him to use the true triple combustion as much as possible. I will leave that on. I'm also going to leave fl Flame Cell on because this has a low uh, spirit break that will allow all of my other magic units to deal more damage. 
all consuming flame however it does not have any chaining so i will turn that off instead i could also look at his sub job and it does have a fire imperil but we are getting a fire imperil from rain's limit burst it's generally important to bring an elemental imperil and a spirit or defense break or resist type break for whatever type of boss that you are fighting. So for example, with Classy Glassy, she could lower the magic resistance even further for this boss, allowing my other units to do more damage. When we look at Yuffie, she's just a fast unit that's going to boost the agility of all the other units, but she also has a ton of different chaining skills, including her Limit Burst, Art of War, and the Trinity attack on the operative subjob. Classy Glassy also has a chaining skill. Now, I don't actually have it on right now because it's on her subjob, but she has a Triple Bite skill that will allow you to get even higher fire chains. I'm also just realizing right now that I still have the Odin Esper on her, which is not the Esper that I would actually want to have equipped. Uh, for now, I'll put on Shiva, but the idea is that you do have your best stuff on here. Once you get to high level raids, that's when you start to optimize more. You start to look at these teams really carefully and you think, where is every single inch of extra damage that I can acquire? Is it in the ability turn off and on? Is it through getting extra AP through things like bells or Lucio's TMR? Do I need to agility tune my team and raise the agility of some units, position them in certain orders? There's quite a bit of testing that can be done to increase your viability of raids. Uh, but at this point, when I'm just hitting the level 43 Envy, there's not really a big deal. I could be clearing this with Roy Solo if I wanted to, uh, but for now, I just have this team as a demonstration for this video. I wanted to mention that there are ways to farm this raid even if you don't have the bonus unit like Roy Mustang. My guildmate Kent was able to make a duo team that can solo the level 100 raid using only Rain and Yishtola from the Final Fantasy XIV collab at the beginning of the game. She is an MR unit with some pretty powerful fire magic, and I'll share the screenshots of his team in case you want to replicate his build. So what should players actually get from this raid? Well, the Xiao Mei plush doll is actually pretty good. It gives some really good resistances, which can be very useful as those things are often harder to get around than things like slash resistance or defense or spirit. It's obviously very, very strong for all these full metal alchemist units. So if you got any of those units, you definitely want to craft one of these. And in my opinion, you'd want to craft the shield version because it just has the best value there for stats. If you did not get any Full Metal Alchemist units, then there's a chance that you don't actually need this item unless you really are a big fan of getting a ton of dark or light resistance from it. Otherwise, you might actually look at some of the other items. The White Marshmallow Miniature is also a very interesting item. I like this one because it has a lot of accuracy. So we have 15 accuracy on the aim version and then 20 accuracy on the passive. It also helps you deal with a lot of different status effects. So if you have trouble with these status elements, this might be a good item for you to craft, although it's not the top of my priorities. The Brigandine is one of the best pieces of armor in the game. AOE resistance is just so powerful and a lot of un units can't actually use this, but for the ones that can, it's totally worth it, including the new Lightstern that just launched. It's definitely something that I rate very highly and I actually only have one of these, so I'll be looking to craft my second version uh, during this raid period and hopefully I'll be getting both versions to plus six in the shield version. The Galmia coat used to be a very very powerful item but it lost a little bit of value when we got the 20% magic trust stone. Still to have 30% extra magic is still very powerful. That's 10% more than the trust stones would give you plus you get the human killer now for magic attacks. It's definitely still an interesting item especially because it gives 22 spirit at the for the barrier version at plus six. It's something that you could craft but again I would craft the brigandine before this and I would even craft maybe the marshmallow miniature before this in depending on whether you need an accuracy item or if you think that those status ailments are really something that you want to cover i recognize that not everybody's going to have all the time in the world to clear out this shop it's a lot of work doing raids and i think that's why they don't come around so often because it's just a long slog to get the required metals to buy all this stuff and this is a pretty stacked raid shop if i ever saw one so the ur unit mind spheres are definitely good value for those that actually got some full metal alchemist units and again we talked about all of the equipment just now but i also think it's worth picking up this visigenic antler 
as well as these scrolls in here, especially the UR scrolls are super valuable, but I would also get the MR scrolls if you can. I would skip things like the Rainbow Fragment of Thoughts. The Rainbow Spheres, I actually would pick those up. I think those are still really good. And the Blossoms of Paradise, are less important than they used to be, but for a lot of players, these will be a must get as well. It's something that you can leave for the end. Otherwise, the Orb of Envisionments are also very important, but you could leave them for the end. I would skip the Azure Imbued and the Gold Imbued Fragments of Thought. Uh, the Trust Stone tickets aren't as important as they used to be because we can farm them so quickly now. Uh, and all this other materials, really you don't need to farm these. Uh, the Burst Pots, at uh, for a beginner player, it's only 2,500 medals and it's, you know, but you'll get a lot of those eventually anyway. And the materials here, this is at the very end when you spot everything that you want to buy, then you could get some extra materials if you really wanted to. Otherwise, at the very bottom, you could get some energy restores every day. It's only 500 medals to get five medium pots. So I think that's a good thing to grab every single day if possible. The main priority for me still is to get the recipes that I want as well as this antler. Uh, and then I'll be going for the mind spheres. Then I'll be going for all these these scrolls and the, the blossoms and the spheres and stuff. But I'm definitely going to be farming quite hard for this raid. Uh, so I hope that you're able to as well. That's going to be it for this new player guide, and I hope it was useful for you. As per usual, veterans add some details into the comments if I missed anything. And if you're a new player, feel free to join my Discord. We have a War of the Visions help channel. And I also have a new player beginner guide video playlist with a ton of other videos that I will hopefully be adding to with information for new players. And if you'd like to see a certain video next, feel free to comment that as well. Otherwise, I'll see you all soon in another video.